To visit Jericho today doesn't usually invoke an idea of paradise. Tensions with Israel during the past few years mean life has been difficult in Jericho recently. And the economy of the world's oldest city reflects that difficulty. Nevertheless, the city survives. Its land is lush. Its produce is rich. There is still a boast that Jericho produces the finest citrus in all the world. To understand why history has often referred to Jericho as a city of paradise, you'd have to see what surrounds it. The rugged cliffs of the Judean wilderness frame Jericho on the west. The Dead Sea with its useless water is a short walk to the south. The deserts of Jordan are just across the Jordan River Valley to the east. And far to the south and to the southeast would be the rugged wilderness where the Israelites wandered for so long after their exodus. Had it not been for some underground springs, Jericho would not exist as a city today or in history. But because of those underground springs, Jericho claims to be the world's oldest city. A bit of lush green paradise springing up in the desert. And it communicates quite a story to us today. You might say the city is still an invitation to our personal version of paradise if we'll simply take the lessons from the Bible stories about it and apply them to our lives. Jericho appears many times in the Bible but never more prominently than in two stories dealing with older adults. One of those older adults was a man named Joshua. After the death of Moses, he and his nation of rescued Israelites returned to the Jordan River. They looked again for the courage to take their promised land. Joshua must have needed that courage badly, for God repeatedly tells his new leader, Don't be afraid. Be strong. Be full of courage. <laughs> As a younger man, Joshua had been a very brave spy in the promised land. Forty years later, however, he was given the frightening mantle of leadership. Now he was something of a senior adult rookie, charged with leading an impossible battle against Jericho. And when Joshua relayed God's instructions of how to take the city, the people must have been terrified again. They would be called upon to use the most unconventional warfare ever. They would simply march around the city for a week and shout the walls down on the seventh day. On top of that, they would have to cross a flooded Jordan River just to get to Jericho. Don't forget that the parents of this group had come to this very point of decision-making once before, only to turn back, rebelling against Moses and dooming themselves to 40 years of wandering through the wilderness. Under Joshua's instruction, the children of Israel actually did cross the river and follow those very unusual instructions, and they took the city. You know, after 40 years in the wilderness, this place must have looked like paradise. On the other hand, the city was so well armed and so well defended, it must have been a terrifying experience. Somehow they worked up the courage and they took their city. After his success at Jericho, Joshua never lacked the courage to lead again. In due time, he led his people to take complete possession of the Promised Land. A few centuries later, in a dramatically different story, another older adult brought Jericho back into the spotlight. Interestingly, this New Testament story is another invitation to paradise. It's an invitation to have a life-changing personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And no matter what your age, there still remains an opportunity to experience paradise. There's a second story that has made Jericho very famous in the Bible. It's a story of the day when Jesus and his followers came through this city. And they met a most unusual man, or else it was a, a very unusual encounter. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, says the song, meaning he was shorter than the rest of the crowd. That's why he climbed a sycamore tree. And there is indeed a sycamore tree in Jericho today. The sign says it's 2,000 years old. We don't know if it's the tree that Zacchaeus climbed, but we do know there was a profound change in Zacchaeus' life. You see, he had cheated people out of a lot of money. He had, uh, he had just been involved in a lot of immorality financially, and, and he was a hated man in this town. 
And yet when he met Jesus, when Jesus came to his house, that very encounter challenged Zacchaeus to come to a, to come to a point of change that he had never anticipated. In a sense, it was his personal River Jordan. Are, are you going to cross it or not, Zacchaeus? Well, Zacchaeus crossed that river. He, he changed his ways. He gave back the money he had cheated from people. And people in Jericho were, were astonished at the change that had come about in a man just because he had met Jesus. You know, Jericho seems to me to be a place where God has continually challenged people. He's asked them to, to chase their dreams and to sometimes change their ways. And I want to challenge you in this oldest city in the world. If God has brought you to a point of great challenge, if God has brought you to a point of taking your promised land or perhaps changing your ways, don't back off of God's challenges. Follow His instructions. Take your city and learn the joys of a heart that's been changed by God.